Welcome to a Business Growth Mindset Podcast, number 30. I'm Chris Lavolsi, and I'm incredibly grateful to be here today and share this episode with you. In today's episode, I'm going to share with you nine areas, that's right, nine areas that will help you supercharge your business growth. These are the very same steps that I share with my clients and I apply to their business so we can grow and flourish. It applies to students, corporates, tradies, CEOs, and entrepreneurs, and I know that it will help you grow and flourish. This podcast will help you create a blueprint to build a profitable and sustainable business that works for you. So to all the business owners and entrepreneurs, the crazy ones, the believers, the doers, the clever makers, the action takers, and everybody else in between, this podcast was designed for you. If this is your very first time listening to my content, make sure that you subscribe by clicking the subscribe button and change your notifications alert setting so you don't miss future episodes. There are nine critical areas in your business that will impact your success and failure. These nine areas form the very foundation of our proprietary Grow and Flourish program. And I'm going to share this with you today for free. So listen up. Many business owners know about these nine areas, but rarely focus on them. Instead, they spend most of their time working through operational and management issues. They are frustrated and struggle with working too many hours, putting out fires, and chasing their people. Our program forces you to spend time focusing on all nine areas so that you don't continue to suffer the struggles and frustrations of the often treacherous path of business growth. It allows you to approach your business from a helicopter view so that you can achieve clarity and confidence in your direction, knowing exactly which area of your business you must drive and focus towards. Now, this means working fewer hours and making more money. It means taking back control and leading with results into freedom. Confucius said, our greatest glory is not in never failing, but in rising every time we fall. Now, before we dive into growth, I need to share with you the six clear stages to moving your business towards freedom, and it applies to every business. Now, having founded and co-founded and invested in 77 businesses and advised more than 500 companies across 18 countries, these stages are universal. So number one, or stage one, is develop a strategic plan. Now, this will provide you with the clarity and direction that you need. If... um, It it should address the why, what, who, how, and when, and think of it as a game plan. Now, stage two is enhance. This is about establishing core structure and empowered leadership. This is where you maximize wins for maximum profits, you increase action, and you create peak performance. Now, stage three is systemize. Now, this is about replication and order. This is where you take back control, you establish accountability structures, and you streamline operations while you leverage your resources. Number four or stage four is automate. And this is where you grow. Here you create more time. The focus is on cost minimization, greater efficiencies and scale. Stage five, innovate. This is the stage of expansion. For many businesses, this is a time to refresh, We explore opportunities, we make improvements, and we focus on sales and marketing. And number six and stage, the final stage is freedom. Now, this is the empowerment stage. It's where you diversify income streams, plan the exit, and explore new venture creation. Now, many business owners along their journey feel lost and alone in their business. This is not uncommon. They might be stuck and unsure even when they are succeeding. This is normal, and often all they need is some extra help to get them to the next level. Now, working 60 to 70 hours a week can be a grind, combined with managing the team, the products and services, managing the finances, and then finding family time can be overwhelming, and for some, it can lead to burnout. 
Now, becoming clear about why you are in business is fundamentally important to your success. Our Grow and Flourish program is designed to help you get back on track and in control in less than 90 days. So to be clear, it's not a magic pill. It requires discipline, time, and effort. Over 12 months, it will help you navigate through the treacherous path of growth by enhancing and systematizing your business and empowering your people so that you can have more time and more freedom. So how do I help my clients get back at least 10 hours a week, increase organizational morale, and improve profits in less than 90 days? I built a system that is proactive and works time and time again because it's actionable and repetitive. Now, these nine areas are universal, and here's what they are. One, purpose. Two, culture. Three, goals. Four, leadership. Five, systems and process. Six, finance. Seven, sales. Eight, marketing. And number nine, automation. Now, now that I have shared the steps with you, I want to give you Uh, even more value by sharing a little about each step or area. So let's just look at this, understanding purpose. Now, success is the greatest failure known to humanity because we don't truly understand the repercussions of success. This is why understanding your purpose, it matters. It is the answer. When you have purpose, you will always have a healthier outlook on work and life. Understanding your purpose allows you to make yourself vulnerable and put your values out into the world. It is so easy to become fixated on the what and the how of achievement. This fixation is the reason many people don't recognize that first and foremost, their focus should be on the why. When you are purpose-driven, you can inspire others to follow you because having a purpose is magnetic. Some call it charisma, but the truth is it's much more straightforward. You have purpose and most people don't. It is this that draws people to you. Oliver Holmes was a famed physician and dean of Harvard Medical School, and he once said, Most of us go to our graves with with our music still inside us, unplayed. When you understand your purpose, you go beyond the limits of your horizon. This puts you in an incredible position, one where you can elevate others to share your vision. Let's look at culture. So creating culture. Culture is the ideas, the customs, the social behavior of particular people or a society. Organizational culture refers refers to shared values, attitudes, standards, and beliefs that categorize members of an organization and defines its nature. So James Hesket in uh, the Harvard Business Review stated that a strong culture can account for 20 to 30% of the differential in corporate performance when compared with culturally unremarkable competitors. Wow. So then let's explore six fundamentals that create great culture. So one, vision, because that guides the organizational values and provides it with that word, purpose. Two, values. They are the core of culture. They offer guidelines on behavior and mindsets. Number three, action. Values have little importance if they are not enshrined in organizational practice. Number four, people. They need to share the values and possess a willingness and ability to embrace them. And number five, narrative. A unique story worth telling is a core element to culture creation. And finally, number six, which is place, because it shapes people. And remember, culture eats strategy for breakfast. Now let's go back to number three, creating goals. So many people I meet have no goals. They wake up every day and they do the same thing as they did the day before, but expect, you guessed it, a different result. Many business owners I meet have no goals. Instead, they have dreams and aspirations. These are not goals. 
If you want to move in a different direction and achieve a different result, you need to have a destination. This is your goal. Write SMART goals for the next 12 months. Break these goals into actionable uh, tasks in a 90-day sprint with milestones. These become the checkpoints to your destination. Mobilize yourself and your team to achieve these goals by sharing them with them and guiding them through the 90-day plan. This is about taking massive action. Now, when writing SMART goals, remember they must be specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. Okay, now we're back to four, right? So the nature of leadership, being a leader can be defined as someone whom people follow voluntarily. The process of inspiring others to work hard to accomplish important goals. And also the process of influencing others to achieve organizational goals. The other thing they do is that they use non-coercive influence to shape the group or organizational goals, motivate behavior and define culture. But the key points about the nature of leadership is choosing a leadership style that suits you, your organization and its people. This is critical. Organizations rely on large numbers of people to fill low, moderate wage jobs. And staff turnover is a key issue. Employees often want more than just a pay packet. So let's quickly address the management versus leadership scenario. Let's break down their roles and see how they differ. Management, what do they do? They plan and budget, they oversee staffing, they solve problems, they maintain order and write reports and checklists and that kind of stuff. Leadership, on the other hand, the leaders, they've got to chart a course that provides direction. They've got to offer guidance and counsel. They've got to motivate and inspire a call to action. They need to create um, an, an environment for change, but also they need to train and teach. So let's look at now number five. So systematize your process. When you don't have any systems in place, your process gets lost. Systems and processes create accountability. Areas that will help you to systematize your business for growth include having an organizational chart whereby all the people in your company are on it and are they in the right seats on the bus? Positions, right? Make sure that you have position descriptions, their duties and responsibilities. And look at key performance indicators, how-tos, structured weekly meetings, and 90-day sprints. Systematizing your process will allow you and your team to achieve the same results over and over and over again. Now, number six, know your finances, right? Understand your financial statements. It's critical to your success. There are three statements that you need to become familiar with, and they are the balance sheet, the profit and loss, and the cash flow. Now, many business owners rely solely on the profit and loss statement, but this is not enough. In fact, it's outright dangerous and not suitable for a growing business. Poor management of cash flow is the main reason that businesses fail. A paper profit doesn't mean that you will have sufficient cash flow to pay your creditors. For an SME, you need to prepare a weekly cash flow forecast that needs to be updated daily. This will provide you with the visibility and flexibility to take a considerate approach to managing your cash flow. Now, what scares me the most is that there are many business owners and particularly sole traders sailing close to the cliff's edge and most struggle with reading a profit and loss statement, let alone understanding a balance sheet. So let me be clear, it's not that hard. It really does come down to practice. And why? Because a simple cash flow is essentially money in and money out. It is the inflows and the outflows of your business. The hardest part is planning for when it comes in and when it needs to go out. And more importantly, it's about understanding how much cash you actually need to make it to the other side. And some of us refer this to the wrong way. Okay, we're getting close here. Seven, the sales process. When you know the selling problem hotspots, then you can maximize your sales process. And so I'm gonna share with you six selling problem hotspots 
that happen in business. One, prospecting. Two, closing. Three, selling value. Four, results lag and goals not being achieved. Five, poor sales skills. And six, losing accounts. Now, there are two basic foundations to sales that you have to consider. One is leverage. How can you make more money with less work? And systems and processes. Have you got a sales playbook so that you can replicate and scale? Now, your aim must be to uncover the problem, establish perceived value, and provide the solution. Now, perceived value is what it's all about. This means we need to differentiate ourselves from our competitors. Our products and services must uh, value add to our consumer, and our service must exceed the expectation of our consumer. And I think, number eight, <laughs> I think that's where we're up to, the rise of marketing, right? The modern economy depends on trade, and it's the responsibility of marketing to oversee the trading of your products and services. The role of marketing is to create offerings that appeal to suspects, right? It's about planning, research, and competing. As part of that development, you need to test and learn and test again to ensure that the products and services that get produced are actually what consumers want to buy at the price that they can pay. Now, become familiar with the concept of the marketing mix. Now, that is product or service, pricing, advertising and communication, as well as distribution. Now, it's also commonly known as the famous four Ps, product, price, promotion, and place. Your ability to influence the marketing mix comes down to your ability to measure the metrics and understand the relationships. Gary V, or Gary Wienerchuk, says that the best marketing strategy is care. What do you think it is? Drop your comments below with the hashtag marketing strategy. Now, finally, the last one, number nine, benefits of automation. Now, the benefits of automation can be illustrated in seven areas. Um, quality and consistency, time saving, metric visibility and accountability, You've got operational efficiencies. You've got governance and reliability. You've got reduced turnover times and reduced costs. Now, for small business, repetition is critical. Therefore, look for things in your business that you do more than once, and this provides an opportunity for automation. Now, automation will eliminate some jobs and even fields in coming years. It is unavoidable, unavoidable and necessary to stay competitive and maximize profits. The demand will always exist for individuals and teams that demonstrate critical thinking and creative problem solving skills. Automation is the final piece in the puzzle for you to experience more of uh, more time off and more freedom than ever before. Now these tools, right, will help you grow and flourish but listening to this podcast is only the beginning. And because today is all about value, I've included in the notes section a link for you to download the complete nine steps to supercharging your business growth workbook. It's absolutely free. So please grab your copy and take a deeper dive with the workbook and replay this podcast. Now that you are aware of the nine areas that will help you to supercharge your business, you must take action. The real magic starts when you begin to implement each of the nine areas. You must be really clear about your purpose so that you can um, have others follow you voluntarily into the future. It's hard enough to get people to take action on the now, so it's critical that you know your future and that you can articulate it to your stakeholders. Now, to capitalize on this, uh, strategy or to capitalize on this strategy to its fullest potential. Most people need guidance and leadership, and that's okay. That is what we specialize in at the Business Growth Mindset. So today, being all about value bombs, so here is another one just for you. If you want to see if you are the right fit for our Grow and Flourish program, then book a 15-minute discovery call right now. On this call, we will work 
through understanding your purpose and outcomes so that we can assess our mutual suitability. Now, if you feel that you have the winning products and services, but can't find the winning formula and strategy to grow your business, then don't hesitate. Book your 15 minute discovery call with me right now. I have really loved hanging out with you today and providing you with insights into what we do and how we do it. I hope you found the information encouraging and that you can use it in your quest to become more vulnerable, show up and stand up in the arena. If you love today's episode, please take a minute to rate it and provide a review. This helps others know that, I, that the content that I'm sharing is valuable, but also inspires me to share more with you. Please take care during this time, be vulnerable and be courageous. And as always, and or at least until next week, live with purpose.